the DNA being wrapped around histones is what we refer to as a nucleosome. And um, these nucleosomes decorate the DNA like beads on a string um, to package it in the nucleus. It still is not clear how, how transcription factors are able to bind these regions of DNA that are seem to wrapped up and hidden in, in this chromatin. And then subsequently, how can they open it? So then it's like a new, um, or it's an open region of DNA for genes to be activated and expressed. We know that it happens, we just don't know how it happens. And so we needed to use structure, high resolution imaging, in order to figure out how the interaction occurs between the transcription factor and the nucleus. The specific transcription factors that we chose to look at are called OCT4 and SOX2. They work together and they can, or they have been uh, referred to as pioneer transcription factors because they are the first factors that are able to gain access to the DNA in nucleosomes and then open it up for other factors to come in, like uh, RNA polymerase, to be able to transcribe the information. And then also these factors are particularly cool because uh, in about 2006, it was discovered that you could take a cell that was differentiated, that was um, like a skin cell or a heart cell, and then just turn on these transcription factors, and then it completely reprogrammed them back into a stem cell. And so this has um, a lot of implications in regenerative medicine. And so these were sort of clear candidates to be able to uh, really identify the structural details on how this works. We synthesized a library of all possible motif positions along a 140 base pair DNA strand, assembled that into a nucleosome using histones, and then presented a transcription factor with that library of all possible positions of the motif on the nucleosome. And when we do this and use gel electrophoresis to separate those bound nucleosomes from unbound nucleosomes, we can take the bound and unbound components, use next generation sequencing to match back the motif position of those bound and unbound nucleosomes and use the molecular counts from the next generation sequencing data to find the most preferential binding sites of the transcription factor on the nucleosome. And with this information, we could then go and pursue uh, structural studies to understand the structural details on how this initial engagement of a transcription factor with its motif on a nucleosome really works. Looking at the structure, we see that SOX2 together with OCT4, shown in OCT4 in red and SOX2 in, in yellow, pull the DNA away from the histones and SOX2 kind of acts like a can opener and kinks it away from the histones. And the DNA is straightened around the OCT4 site. And specifically for OCT4, what we noticed too is that OCT4 has two DNA binding domains. But in our structure, we only see one of the DNA binding domains engaged with DNA, meaning that the other DNA binding domain is actually flexibly tethered, but invisible to us in our cryoEM maps um, and not bound to its motif. And this partial motif um, engagement, we think actually can serve as um, a bona fide binding site in the genome. And what it reveals to us mechanistically is that this is really the first kind of touchdown of OCT4 and SOX2 with DNA that's hidden in chromatin, where this is how they can first recognize and like see their motifs and then bind and open, open the chromatin a bit. For us to be able to gain insight into if this partial motif could be actually engaged by OCT4 and SOX2 in the cell, we use two main approaches. One is a, a genome-wide technique that looks at regions of DNA that are either enclosed in nucleosomes or open and accessible for, for factors or transcription factors to engage with. And indeed, uh, Luke uh, found out that using or reanalyzing some genome-wide data, that this is possible, that OCT4 and SOX2 can actually engage with the partial motif in the cell. The second line of evidence we gained for this was to specifically manipulate a, a locus in the cell. So we engineered a particular region in the cell where we specifically placed either the full motif, the partial motif, or some control motifs that should not actually be bound by OCT4 and SOX2. And by doing this, we also identified that this partial motif can actually be engaged and bound by OCT4 and SOX2 in the cell.
So the brilliant thing about the FMI and being in the Schubler and Thoma uh, groups is that we have all the tools at our disposal that we need. We're able to come together and find something new that we'd never be able to do by ourselves. Just being able to communicate on a daily basis with people who look at things a bit differently, I think um, really gave us, gave us an edge in this and um, I am excited to, to keep moving um, together with them into the future to look at other things.